Hello and welcome to High Spirit Bags Travel Vlog. My name is Barbara and this week we'll be featuring a slightly different kind of travel video. Now, we usually love featuring fun and cool travel related videos, but sadly, over the last few weeks the UK has been hit really hard by the coronavirus disease, also known as COVID-19. Now, we are aware that these are challenging times for all of us around the world. So wherever you are, we firstly want to send you lots of love, virtual hugs, and a positive message to say that this too shall pass. Also, if you've been impacted by the disease, either yourself, relatives or friends, we want to offer and send our sincere and utmost condolences. Now, given many of us are self-isolating, and rightly so, you might be curious to know, how do the streets of London look as a result? Now, here's a walkthrough video of Shoreditch Old Street in London. And hopefully this video can give you an idea of how London streets are currently like in the midst of this epidemic. This journey starts on Scruton Street, just outside the iconic Curtain Hotel. Now, this video was filmed on Monday the 16th of March around 1pm. During normal times, the streets would have been busy and teeming with office workers heading to grab a bite to eat for lunch. Where the Curtain Hotel sits is an especially busy area because it's at a crossroads. To the right of Scruton Street is Curtain Road, which is a one minute walk from Liverpool Street Station. This is the corporate side of London, with bank branches like UBS, First Commercial Bank and even Monzo Bank all having branches there. Now, where I'm walking is towards Great Eastern Street, which is a large road that cuts through Shoreditch area, connecting it all the way to Old Street. Now, something to bear in mind is that the postcodes in this area do change. So while the Curtain Hotel and areas around Liverpool Street Station and Shoreditch fall under the EC or E1 postcode, essentially meaning East London, Old Street and parts of Old Street are still also EC postcode and E1 postcode. However, interestingly enough, areas near Old Street Station and especially residential areas are also part of the N1 postcode, meaning essentially North London postcode. However, by and large, most postcodes in this part of town do start with E as we are technically in East London. So as you can see from this video, this was before the official lockdown, which was announced on the 23rd of March. However, even prior to that, London was becoming more and more deserted as people were self-isolating, the disease was really spreading, and therefore there was so much uncertainty, meaning a lot of London and especially a lot of offices closed down and essentially parts of London became ghost towns. Now, as you can see here, what this fields someone who's walking through London and what should be a really busy area, it gives you a really eerie feeling of dread and feeling that there's this hidden enemy. We can't quite see it, but we can see that it's having an impact on everybody. This road is called Great Eastern Street and it runs through all of Shoreditch and connects it essentially to Old Street and onwards. Now let's speak a little bit about Shoreditch and the area itself. Now, Shoreditch borders the city and it's nestled between an area called Clerkenwell as well as Bethnal Green, and it's one of London's most treasured hotspots for culture, art, fashion and food. By day and night, Shoreditch is bursting and bustling with opportunities to indulge in a variety of dining and entertainment options, and it's a central resort for hipsters. They love this eclectic pocket of East London. There are a lot of flats, but equally, there are lots of places to work and East London as a whole, as a little bit of background knowledge for yourself, it has seen huge growth and success since the London 2012 Olympics, with property prices jumping as much as a thousand pounds a month, and prestigious brands like Google, Bloomberg, Intel, Amazon, and Cisco, which set up shop in the area. Hence why, when it comes to Shoreditch itself, it's such a popular and busy area. Now, as you can see here, Great Eastern Street takes me all the way to Old Street and this whole intersection is 
totally empty save for some cars as you can see here as well as a few pedestrians however in normal times these roads are chock a block old street is an extremely busy area as it connects on to the main city onto areas like islington where there is a lot of trade but even old street itself is home to lots and lots of shops restaurants as well as businesses as you can see here, this traffic is really not normal. It's incredibly quiet and people have really self-isolated. And as you can see also in the surrounding area, there are lots of high rise buildings, including corporate spaces, many of which had been shut down before the official announcement of lockdown on the 23rd of May. Now, you might be curious about Old Street itself. So as the name suggests, Old Street has been a highly transistored road for centuries and first records of this place date from the 13th century when Old Street was part of a Roman road that linked the settlements of Silchester near Basingstoke and Colchester and as London evolved into an important metropolis Old Street became one of the capital's main thoroughfares so when you're thinking about this kind of history Old Street is always incredibly busy in normal times therefore this is really unheard of. Nothing like this we've ever seen as Londoners before, especially in our lifetime. Now, as you can see, I'm passing by Old Street Silicon Roundabout. Now, until very recently, the roundabout that marks this intersection of Old Street and City Road had mostly been known for being the location of the St Agnes World Shopping Centre. However, from the beginning of the 2000s and onwards, there's been a drastic change in the type of businesses that can be found in the area. In fact, Old Street Roundabout is now known as the Silicon Roundabout, an allusion to the California-based technology center. This part of Old Street is now a first-class technological hub and it's usually incredibly busy and it started with about 15 companies in 2008 and it's now going to be the base of more than 200 firms by 2001. And these firms, of course, as you can see here, sit alongside residential areas and of course also they sit alongside the more trendy side of Shoreditch where there's lots of different types of startup businesses as well as a different culture of work that comes with the startup area now as you can see here to my left as i'm walking there are also high-rise apartments and high-rise homes and these many of these are council flats and as you can see here lots of the residents are self-isolating and nobody wants to get out so when you have this history in mind of old street but also its present busyness this is just something that's very bizarre to see indeed you may be looking at this and wondering in better times what is there really to do in old street interestingly enough old street doesn't really have that much to do apart from eating in nice restaurants. Old Street is highly corporate, however there are a plethora of restaurants that you can visit to go and have a bite to eat. However, we would recommend venturing a little bit just one or two minutes down the road as I'm walking using the same path along Great Eastern Street and venturing right back on to Shoreditch. There you will find plenty of restaurants, places to go out, eateries, but also clubs, bars, and different types of an, an eclectic mix of genres which you can enjoy and you can also have access to. Now, as I mentioned, we're huge fans of Shoreditch. And in better times, you might be wondering what some of the things we would recommend when it comes to traveling and exploring Shoreditch London. As the creative hub of London's East End, Shoreditch is home to an array of interesting markets, bars and restaurants. Unlike central London, where most art that's found is found inside galleries and museums, the first thing you can actually do when you go to Shoreditch is marvel at London's best street art. The best place to look for visual inspiration in the East End is essentially its streets. You can even go to Shoreditch 
Brick Lane area and take in some of the area's most impressive and creative murals with Red Church Street and Shoreditch Triangle boasting the best of the bunch. Also in Shoreditch, you can shop till you drop. Shoreditch is a gold mine for one of a kind clothes and accessories with more independent boutiques and vintage shops that you can shake a stick at. For ultimate core cool points, we would recommend Attica, formerly Blitz London, which is one of the biggest vintage shops in Europe. Also, you can go visit Brick Lane Sunday Market, which is just a five minute walk, which offers bargain hunters a mammoth selection of secondhand finds. You could also go and visit different cinemas and also indulge in lots of street food up in Brick Lane. You can find institutions like Bagel Bake, which offers different type of Canadian poutine as well as Thai delicacies. But you can also go to Shoreditch Sunday Market. Don't also forget Shoreditch is home to lots and lots of clubs. Therefore, you can go to clubs such as Cargo, XOYO, as well as the Book Club, which is an event space. And you can also, of course, finally eat, shop and party in the Shoreditch area as well as Box Park. Now, sadly, given what's happening with COVID, this isn't possible. And as you can see here, all the streets are locked up and shuttered and all of these establishments are sadly closed for the time being until the virus passes. Now this is a challenging time for everybody in London. However, we are optimistic that together we will all see this virus through and we will beat it. London has now ground to a stand still and currently under the lockdown, all shops, businesses and all non-essential trades have been closed down. However, we hope that wherever in the world you are watching this, you are keeping safe, secure, and also we hope you are keeping happy and optimistic as this too shall pass. Make sure if you found this video useful, do give this video a like and a thumbs up. Also don't forget to visit www.highspiritbags.com where you can find lots of bags which are theft proof indeed you can use this if you're planning to visit London in the future and any other part of the world. We hope to accompany you on your new and exciting travel journey and we look forward to seeing you on the other side. Make sure you come back to our channel as we will be producing a few more walkthrough videos of London during lockdown. Thank you so much for listening.